Okay, in this next segment we're going to talk about servo setup and getting the servo wheels onto the servos. Um, so before we do that, however, we need to get our radio set up. Now I highly recommend you start with a new model in your radio and make sure the following things are set properly. Make sure all endpoints on all channels are 100%. So channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You need 6 for this heli and a 401 gyro. Set the swash plate to type 120, so 120 degree swash plate. Okay, the next thing is make sure your normal and idle 1 curves for both throttle and pitch, for now, are set linear. That is, if you have a 5 point pitch curve, it's 0, 25, 50, 75, 100. If you've got a three-point pitch curve, it's 0, 50, 100, so on and so forth. You want that curve linear. Finally, make sure your sub trims and your regular trims are all set to zero. So make sure everything's base set up in the radio because what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and find arms that fit on these servos and try and get them as 90 degrees to the servo as possible, basically level. Okay. So depending on the servos you're using, these are HS56s find the arms we want to use arms we're gonna put the ball in the hole that's about 13 millimeter on these high-tech arms it's the second hole 13 millimeter from the center of the shaft that gives us some of the uh, the best resolution and straightest shot of the links to the swash plate okay so get your radio set up like that and then what we're gonna do is we're going to um, find a wheel that best fits the servo now what I mean by that is now that we've got everything set up, now that we've got everything set up, um, we're going to go center throttle stick on the radio. Okay, let me go wide here. So we want it, we got everything set up and we want center throttle stick on the radio. So dead center, doesn't matter what your radio is, you want dead center on the throttle stick. Okay, so all sticks at center. Got it? So now with that, we go ahead and we plug in our receiver. Now, in, in, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using just a regular battery to, um, to uh, power the receiver. I'm not going to go through the speed control and everything because we're just setting up servos, so this makes it easy. If you don't have one, you can go ahead and set up your speed control and plug it all in. Um, so we're going to go ahead and plug in. Now, the idea being with center throttle stick, okay, make sure you're dead center. With center throttle stick, we want to find a servo wheel that best gives us 90 degrees on the servo. Let me get the wires out of the way here. So as you can see this servo arm here looks pretty 90 degrees to the servo. You don't want it tipped slightly up or down. So find arms that best give you 90 and put them on there. Uh, and by the way on these high techs you can use either the single arm or the double arm and if you use the double arm the 13 millimeter hole is the third hole out on this wheel. Okay. Some wheels fit differently than others and you can actually find one that will be more toward 90. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go into your radio sub trims, okay, and you're going to adjust your sub trims. Let's say the wheel was slightly off, like like look at this one here, it's slightly off, uh, best as I could get it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to adjust your sub trims, and you're going to adjust the sub trim like that until all these arms, both this one, this one, and this one, are all at 90. Okay, real quick, I'm going to digress a little bit and talk about which servos what. Here's, this is towards the tail. This servo here is the elevator servo, so this would plug into your elevator channel. These two front servos, it really doesn't matter, but one's going to be pitch and one's going to be aileron. Usually the way I like to set up is this one will be the pitch servo, so this will plug into your pitch channel. This servo here, where this arm comes out here, will be your aileron servo, okay? So again, get them hooked up to the proper channels put the arms on and then go into your sub trims and adjust your sub trims so that these arms are as 90 degrees as possible and if you look down through here you can see the elevator in this one look 90 degrees to the servos okay and that's with center stick on the throttle so get that set up first alright also the next thing you want to check is in your swash menu your 120 swash menu and servo reversing the servo should move like this if I move up on the pitch full stick all three servos should come up if I pull back on the stick all three servos should go down if one servo is not doing that in the proper direction go into servo reversing and reverse that one servo so that all three move up all three move down 
Now we want to check aileron and elevator. So let's go th center throttle stick again so all our servos are center, our arms are 90. And then what we want to do is we're going to go right, now with the tail pointing toward you, we're going to go right aileron. So right aileron, the, this servo over here on the left side of the frame should come up and this servo should go down. If it does not do that, but pitch was working correctly, all three were moving up and down, then you don't switch to go into reversing the switch this, you go into your swash menu and change aileron from a positive to a negative or negative to a positive. So this servo should come up and this servo should go down. Now let's look at elevator. Elevator, if I pull back on the elevator stick, the, this servo here, the elevator servo should go down and these two should come up. And forward on the elevator, this servo comes up, these two go down. If the, the, that is backwards, then go into the elevator mixing in the swash menu and change that from a plus to a minus. By the way, in the, um, in the swash menu, what you should do if, if for now is set your percents of swash mixing. I'll write them down real quick. So the swash menu, you've got aileron, elevator, and pitch. Set those right now to 65%. That'll make sure as we're setting up everything that um, we got as much throw as possible we, and we can turn it down if needed. So in your swash menu, 65%. Okay? So just to, just to summarize, reset all your radio, set up your swash, 65%, 120 swash type. Let's make sure all the servos move in the right directions. Full pitch, all servos go up. All servos go down. If one does not go in that direction, reverse just that one servo. Um, elevator, back stick, this one goes down, these two up. Aileron, right stick on aileron, this one comes up, this one goes down. And opposite, obviously, for left aileron, okay? So get that all set up, then get your arms on, and it's center throttle stick. Again, use your sub trims to make these arms 90 degrees to the swash to the uh, servo okay so they're all 90 degrees you don't want one slightly tipped okay so go ahead and set that up and then I'll go into mounting the balls next okay in this segment we're gonna put balls on our servo arms I've already got the servo arm taken off of this servo uh, do them one at a time or mark them so because remember we 90 would everything so we want to make sure we get the ball on the, uh, the arms on the right servos when we put them back now the kit does not come with balls for the servos so you'll have to go buy a set of aligned balls. If you do, I recommend getting the pack with the steel balls rather than the aluminum. But you can go with the aluminum. They're a little cheaper. Uh, but go ahead and get some uh, balls and screws. Now, I like to use nuts to back my, uh, my balls. I haven't got one on here yet. And lock tight them. You don't have to because these screws screw into the arms fairly well. But the best shot for, for this helicopter is to mount the ball on the inside of the arm. So when we put our servo arm back on there, you'll see when we attach our head and just put it on there, we're just putting it on there to show, we attach our head, these links from the swash plate, uh, the best shot is to have those on the in, those links on the inside of the servo. One second here while I snap this on. And as you see, that gives us our, our, a straightest shot from the servo up to the swash plate. All right, so that is the way we want to do them. Now, a hot tip, if you'll notice, there's a slight angle, very slight, down to the servo with this being on the inside. You can help that situation by taking the aluminum ball or the steel ball or whatever, and what you're going to do is you grind off the standoff off the ball. By grinding that off with a Dremel so you don't have the standoff and just the ball, it'll move that link a little bit closer. But this is, this is straight enough uh, to work just fine. Okay, so grind it off if you want to get a little bit straighter or not, but in either case, as you see, that third hole out gives us the best resolution and pretty much the straightest shot we can get. We could go in on the inner hole, but then what will happen is, as the servo moves up and down with full collective, the link, the link may hit uh, the frame, so you don't want to do that. So third hole out on these arms, 13 millimeter, and grind the standoff off if you want to get a straighter shot. Uh, uh, up the swash plate. But that's pretty darn good right there. We're going to go ahead and leave that like that and that's how we're going to assemble it. So go ahead and do all three balls. Uh, again, all three will go on the inside of the arm for this as well as elevator. So they'll all go on the inside so they'll all be the same. Okay, go ahead and complete that step. And in our next segment, once we get our servos lined up, we'll talk about adjusting the head and getting everything set up.